Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. <laughs> wow, it's weird saying that. It's been a while since I've used that as my intro. I think it's time for a homestead update. So let's see what's going on at Wholesome Roots Farmstead. The goats. <laughs> We've had lots of questions about the goats. There's really nothing to tell. The goats are just the same as they ever were. Lazy, lazy. They seem to spend most of their time just sleeping while Khaleesi overlooks them, keeps them safe. We don't have anybody bred. We don't have anybody about the kid. There's nothing going on there. We will be starting our breeding again here in the next month. We just haven't decided who we're going to breed yet, so not much to report. I'm thinking we're going to breed Rosemary, Truly, and Tabitha, and Parsley this year. So those are the ones that I'm going to be watching for, see when they come in heat and all that. Alright daddy, why don't you grab Parsley and Shadow and bring them in here. And then once Parsley is bred, we'll just leave Shadow in here. Alright. Sound good? Sure. You just probably open the door. She wants she wants to be with her man. So uh, she's showing the indications of being in heat. She's wagging her tail. She's staying over by the buck. And her baby is at Ooh. weaning age and needs to be separated from the females now. So that is what we are gonna do. Today. So I guess there is a goat update, isn't there? Alright, Parsley, get ready. This buck is going to come visit you now. She's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way over to him. Peter's right behind me. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Daddy's getting his collar back on. Oh yes, he's interested. Alright, so while those goats do their goaty things, we'll give you a cow update. <laughs> My precious girl. Looks like we need to do their fly treatment again. Oh, you're running away from me, y'all. So she doesn't have any indications that she's gonna calve. She still has a lot of symptoms, but we don't think she's bred. And well, Miss Lashes here is not bred either, but she is the size of her mom now. So we definitely need to be considering her breeding plans as well. So we are talking with their previous owner getting some ideas we're not sure if we're gonna go with the purebred piney woods cattle which these are or if we're gonna mix in some Dexter because we are trying to make a more homestead friendly cattle that can be dual purpose and milked and also this smaller size and this tamer personality um, instead of a, a pure meat breed being used on the homestead I'm, I'm definitely loving this breed and would be interested in keeping this line and just working on it and developing it even better for the homestead. The birds in the tractors are doing good. We've been letting them out occasionally to free range in here and that seems to be working well. We're not having a huge issue with hawks yet, yet. So we're hopeful that we will be able to free range in this paddock. We are looking into more information about pasture management and learning about when we need to cut things down. So he's cut all of the dog fennel down and kept it from reseeding. We're thinking about overseeding with some rye and maybe some winter cover crops, maybe some red clover. We'll see. And back where the tractor is now, he's working on creating a trail into the woods from that spot. Tardos is doing well, as is Khaleesi. They have both matured a lot, but they still know how to get out of a fence. So unfortunately, the tether is a safety precaution for their safety to keep them from getting out and hit by a car. They still do a really good job of protecting our animals because their bark keeps away all the predators. Good boy, isn't he? He's a good boy. Curtis is a good big boy. Yes, he is. And they get to come off the line and play with us when we are 
running around out here as a family. And they are good with us. Titus is a little bit aggressive with other people though. But we haven't we haven't let him get close enough to test anything, but we know that he would protect us <laughs> for sure against any human danger as well as our animals from predators. He's a good dog. He's a good boy. Bowser. Bowser was being attacked by a butterfly while he was napping. You going in your Bowser dog door? Bowser is doing amazing. He is so fat. <laughs> and he has turned into such a puppy. He comes out and he follows us. Mama has started to regain her weight and her new coat is growing in. And she's looking lovely. Yes, you are looking so lovely. I think we will probably look at breeding her in December again. So that'll be super awesome. Yes, it will, pretty girl. Bill is anxiously awaiting his reuniting time with his friends. And it will be very soon. As soon as we can get the fence up here, we'll bring his girlfriend. Well, he's a barrel, so it's not really his girlfriend. The chickens out here in the run are doing good. They're going to add more mulch to their muddy mess after the major rain we had. But they're doing pretty good. What? What do you have to say? What are you going to say about it, huh? What are you saying about it? Yes, the goose is doing well too. Oh my goodness, you guys have been playing in the mud. So we kept three of Mama's babies. We were able to sell the other five. Well, we sold four and we gave one away as a raffle prize for a cause for the um, making agriculture essential in schools. So that was worth it for us. But they are muddy mess right now. So we're going to be moving them out of the mud and into some nice ground that's nice and firm. <laughs> Don't know if we're going to keep all three. We'll probably keep two of them as breeders and then grow out the other for our freezer. Hopefully, if we don't chicken out. That's one thing is we always have good intentions to raise our own meat. We just oftentimes get tender hearted along the way and fall in love and don't want to. So I'm trying to keep myself distance and detached. I have been saying that our um, bucklings that we get will someday be meat as well. Still haven't done that. <laughs> How many years? <laughs> Been a long time. But maybe someday <laughs> we will eat our own meat. We we do poultry. We do we do we do do chicken, duck, and quail quite easily. But we have not done a four-legged beast yet. We do have every intention of doing it, right, Ryan? Yes, we do. So do you think we'll get there with the pigs? I think so. Whether we sent them off to have it done or suck it up and do it ourselves. I think we could do it ourselves. Mm. We get more back that way. When you send it off, they don't give you all your meat back. You get like a, such a small percent. That might be true, but then I don't have to do the deed myself if, if we send the pigs off. True. Is that a puff ball? I believe so. It's past its prime though, isn't it? Yep. Aww. Puffball mushrooms are edible before they become full of spores and it becomes black inside. I can tell just by the outside that that one's already gone past its nice white pure stage where it's edible and yummy. I just love this maple. I don't know what kind of maple it is. But you can tell it's been here for a long time and it just i don't know i don't know what kind of maple it actually is if you guys have any clues it it very well could be an ornamental and not a native just the way that it's planted here in the middle of the pasture back here and been kept mowed around i could just picture a picnic bench down here and you know, an 
family enjoying a picnic under this tree 50 years ago, you know? The leaves are starting to fall. They're kind of a yellow orange. If any of you know what this tree might be, I know it's a maple, I just don't know which one. I'm not sure at all. So I would love some tips on that. All right, we are going back down into the woods to check the fence lines again where it's just barbed wire. We need to double check because Lash has got out and that's why she's up there with mom again. So once we secure the area again, because now we'll be able to tell where she got out, then we will go ahead and let them back out and so that they can graze and forage more abundantly than that smaller pen up there. There are better ways to fix a fence, but this is the way that we have to do it right now while we troubleshoot before investing too much time and money into fixing spots that we are not sure if she's getting out at. So this is the first step and then we will get more aggressive as we figure out the more aggressive spots for her. This is the spot that we put a bunch of sticks in the fence to see if she was gonna try to pass through again because we already knew she had used it in the past because there's hair from her tail right here. She has not bothered this spot. And this is a very open, sunny spot that she would be tempted to try and she hasn't. So, thumbs up for that. Finally, a use for all the spare baling twine. Anybody else have this issue? Baling twine for days and days and days. It's a valuable homestead too. Repurposed. I chose the orange ones out of all of the colors so we could find them easier later. <laughs> I don't often show this view from the back side of the pig pen. But you can see the boys have made themselves a nice little resting spot. They love to rest under this walnut tree. And there are walnuts falling from it that they get to eat. We will be feeding them some of our walnuts, but I'm afraid of giving too many. So if you guys have any advice about what level of walnuts are safe to give, because I know they do have toxins in them. That's why they're good for parasite cleansing. But I also know that they can be dangerous if given too much. So let me know if you have any advice on how much to feed the pigs those walnuts. All right, so we have updated our fixes on the fence. And now it should be safe to let lashes and friendship out. And then we can get started on our next pig project because we're gonna be putting a fence up inside of that paddock. And we don't need the cows in our way when we're trying to set up electric net fence. So now that we've got that situated, we can go ahead, let them out, break down this fence where the coonies are in move it up there the coonies will follow us because they're so super tame and move mama big mama peaches and bowser up there and put bill in put them in and put the solar charger on that fence inside the paddock that way we can move them around the paddock as we need to and keep them pasteurized We've still got big plans for building a permanent chicken coop and setting up our tropical greenhouse. We just have not had the time or the ability to do it here recently. So we're just working on things as we can, right, Rye? That's right. And sometimes the things that take priority aren't the things that we wanted to do, but they're the things that we have to do. So we've been pushed back by a few different projects that we had to do. And hopefully this winter will be a great project accomplishment time for us and we'll have all of the things we want to do done by spring. <laughs> but you know what? That's one thing about homesteading is you're never done. You're never done. You're always gonna have another project added to your list. You're always gonna have more that you want to do and that you need to do. So enjoy the moments that you have working on the projects make them fun, make them an educational experience and get the most out of it because this is part of this lifestyle is you're constantly working and you're constantly improving on things. So enjoy every minute of it. You might be wondering why these hives are over here in the shade. 
Well, it's not because bees like shade. It's because the bees left. We lost our bees, so we are gonna start over again in the spring. We already have a contact here locally. Actually, the guy who bought four of our pigs, he has 40 hives at his farm, and he is going to work with us, and we're gonna get some nukes or packages from him and get a, a new colony set up, two new colonies. So in the spring, we'll be able to do that and get our bees up and going again. And hopefully we can be more aggressive with our Varroa mite control and our wax moth control. I have the ingredients I need now to keep those under control because once we realized that our colony was gone and we opened it up, we saw a lot of evidence of both of those pests, which is hard to tell if that came in after they left or that's why they left. Either way, we need to take a more aggressive approach on those things. Still trying to do it in a natural approach, but using more aggressive pesticides that are naturally derived. The quail are doing fine. We have downsized our breeding. So one of the things that we want to do now with the quail is to kind of start over. So we're going to go ahead and narrow down our choice breeders and get a good selection going that we can carry on into the future but we're going to reduce the colony through the winter so we don't have to feed as many through the winter when they're not laying as much so we'll harvest the ones that are ready to be harvested and just keep a few of our choice breeders and then in the spring we'll start hatching out for our next line All of our fruit plants for our food forest going strong over here in our temporary holding area. Really excited about getting that area ready over on the side of the buck paddock. Once we move that fence, we're going to be putting in some area where we can grow lots of different fruit. Our vegetable garden, on the other hand, is way, way, way not ready for anything right now. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> October raspberries are the best. They are October raspberries. I can't wait to see these plants in the ground and thriving because if they're doing that good inside of a pot, I can't even imagine. Yes, I can. I grew up eating that kind of raspberries and they were my favorite and they kept fruit all season long. So we do have some stuff growing over here in the vegetable garden, but it's taken over by weeds because we didn't get our mulch put down. And that's okay. There's only so many things we can do in a day and we're just trying to do our best. And sometimes our best is not great, to be honest, it isn't. And I'm not perfect and I can't get everything done and I'm okay with that. So mostly we have a lot of dock and plantain and grass. <laughs> But we do have some beets. Um, these are either beets or Swiss chard. I planted both over here. I think these are beets though. We've got the carrots are doing lovely. Um, I interplanted radishes in between the carrots and I already harvested um, the bulk of the radishes to bring to the farmer's market. But, but I left this one so I could show you why I interplant my carrots and radishes. So that leaves the perfect spacing for the roots to be able to have lots of room to grow in the carrot plant. And then we have a nice big beautiful radish. In a previous video I was calling this daikon radish. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's actually a mustard. Um, either way, the flowers, it's bolting. So I guess we'll sprinkle some flowers on our salad because the flowers are edible but the leaves won't be very good now. And then we have some more radish over here, I think. And potato here and there. 
from this being the area that we had our potatoes in, if we missed the potato, the pea plants that are left are here, but they're not growing. So it's just too hot for them right now. So we're in that strange in-between time of the season where we should be putting out some cold fall seeds, but some of the cold fall seeds aren't gonna like the heat we're in, and some of them aren't gonna like it when we get cold. So <laughs> it's like a balance. You just keep putting some of them out and seeing how they do and finding that sweet spot in your own little ecosystem on your homestead. And with this being a new to us homestead, we are still trying to find that sweet spot. But we have some fall starts that we have left over from the farmer's market. So we have some cabbage and kale and Swiss chard and lettuce and bok choy that we can go ahead and put in the ground. Even if they're competed with the weeds, they're still better in the ground than they are sitting in seed trays where they are right now. You hear that? The songbird up in this big oak tree. It's so pretty. I don't know what kind it is. Is it a mockingbird? Because it's making so many different sounds. If you know what it is, leave it in the comments down below. So, did you guys know that we have a Facebook page? Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends is our group page and Wholesome Roots Passionate Plants is our page page on Facebook. We have Wholesome Roots on Instagram, Wholesome Roots on TikTok, Wholesome Roots... Where else? I'm pretty much everywhere as Wholesome Roots. So those are the places that we tend to post things, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. We also have an Amazon store where we put all of our recommended things for the homestead. And we also have an Amazon wish list. If you're looking to send us or the kids a gift or something for one of the animals, just go ahead and check on there and see what all we've listed. And if you're interested in getting something, go ahead. Well, I guess that's it. You know the drill. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.